So let's go in. I left off with talking about outdoor pens. Um, you're going to want to have a shelter area, a lean-to, something to get out of the elements and out of the sun. Uh, pigs can get sunburn. Um, you're gonna, they're going to want a place that can keep dry. The space allowances are still fairly similar. We usually go a little bit larger in the outdoor only because if they're on a dirt or soil area or pasture, they will root up and create mud holes. So if you give them a little bit more space, they'll be a little bit less destructive or have an entire mud hole created in their pen. Um, but again, the same rules apply. You want sturdy fencing, preferably steel or the metal woven pig panel wire that's uh, securely in place at all the corners and a good sturdy gate that can lock to ensure that they stay where they're supposed to stay. When we talk about feeders, um, 4-H and FFA products, a lot of times you can um, have these feeders that latch onto the side and you're hand feeding, you know how much feed you want your pigs to consume. Um, and so you're monitoring that, whether you have a small kitchen scale or you have a scoop that does the correct volumes for the products you're feeding. Um, you also have the option to have a self feeder. If you're really just raising these to produce um, freezer pork for your family or have other buyers or community members who want to have pork or home raised pork raised in their freezer, you can get a self feeder. And some of those um, are designed anywhere to allow um, two pigs in a pen and some of them are more designed for our like commercial producers i have feeders in my barn for nursery pigs that allow um, six to ten piglets to eat at the feed feed trough or feeder at one time and it holds anywhere from a hundred to two hundred pounds of feed so i don't have to fill the feeder every single day but i'm still checking the feeder so there's a lot of different options um, when you're putting this stuff together. So we've got feed, we got pens, secure space, housing that allows the pigs to be out of the elements, um, supplemental heat sources if they're young pigs and small. Like I said, you could mount some um, heat lamps if you're indoor barn, but always remember safety first, fire hazards. You don't want lamps where the pigs can pull them down. You don't want the heat lamps too close to proximity to dry bedding like shavings or straw for fear of fire hazards. Please make sure everything is done safely and appropriately to ensure not only the safety of your animals, but the safety of your own um, family and barn and property as well. Some other additional things, um, you wanna make sure they always have access to fresh water. Um, water can be provided in a water trough or a half cut tub, but you always wanna make sure pigs have clean, fresh water. Um, water nipples to a hose line or a water line are probably the most effective. It prevents water wastage. It prevents um, pigs from making a mess or a swimming pool or a mud hole in their pen many times. Um, but pigs are pretty intelligent and they can figure out how to use a water nipple. And you just want to make sure every day when you're checking the pigs and observing them that you make sure they have a good clean water flow um, and access at all times. Uh, some other things I wanted to touch on um, while we have this time today is I know in different parts of the world um, people are always asking me, well, how do I know if my pigs are healthy? How do I know if my pigs are sick? What do I do? I'm not a veterinarian. I'm a swine nutritionist, but I work very closely with a lot of veterinarians um, across the country and you're going to want to know and make contact with your local veterinarian who um, hopefully is a, specializes in livestock. Um, they all go to school, they all get training across species, but uh, for veterinarians that work in pig health and everything, those veterinarians that work with livestock are gonna have a good understanding and be able to uh, develop a good relationship in case your pigs ever do get sick and need to have veterinary care. Um, so always make sure, reach out to a veterinarian and develop that relationship, have them visit your site, have them give the pigs a good once over exam when uh, you bring a group of pigs to your place. Um, then you can also work with your veterinarian on preventative care. Uh, many times people don't realize when pigs have access to the outdoors or if they're in an indoor outdoor pen, um, they will still be susceptible to getting intestinal parasites. And those can be readily treated with over-the-counter medications, but many times to have a good effective program and parasite control, you really need the guidance and advice of your veterinarian. And there are different products in the marketplace, whether they are put in the feed or they're used as an injectable, um, the timing placement and the purpose and what type of parasites may be present all need to be reviewed and you can work with your veterinarian on that. 
some other side of the nutrition since that is my focus and I am a swine nutritionist and I love talking nutrition is what kind of quality feeds or how do I know what I'm getting is the best value for the dollars I spend out of my pocket to feed my pigs. Um, every bag of feed has to have a feed label or a feed tag and there's quite a bit of information provided on these tags and not every company is the same um, Prina and our member co-ops we work with we do uh, strong advice and recommendations to offer the highest quality and best ingredients and blends for what's available in your market area and we don't cut corners so our products that are available for um, whether you're in the show arena or in the commercial world, or like I said, even putting together um, a program for feeding your pigs, uh, whether you're having a breeding herd to sell off young pigs to 4-H and FFA members or to sell off to other people to raise, you wanna ensure that it's completely balanced with the five basic nutrients. You're gonna to wanna to have the appropriate protein, which really in the swine world, we talk about amino acids. Amino acids, if you will, are like the Lego, block, the Lego bricks or building blocks for muscle and enzymes and a lot of physiological function for the pig to grow and be healthy and maintain um, its uh, performance over time. And then we're looking at energy. And energy is a source that either comes from our starchy grains like corn or oats, um, barley, uh, wheat. Those are more viewed as the grains that provide the energy. Then we have protein meals or what we call vegetable proteins. And our gold standard in livestock world is soybean meal. Soybean is a very good, high quality, consistent, reliable protein source that when blended with the other grains makes a very complete balanced diet as far as energy and protein and amino acids. Then we're also looking at vitamins, minerals, and the minerals beyond calcium and phosphorus, which help um, with building good skeletal and bone structure. They're also responsible for muscle contraction, and many other um, physiological actions in the body. But we're also looking at trace minerals, copper, zinc, iodine, manganese, and then including and not forgetting um, vitamins. We keep and make sure that all of our products have the appropriate level and actually supersede the requirement levels of all vitamins and trace minerals required for pigs, no matter what their life stage, whether it's a newly weaned pig from a sow or a grow finish pig, or even the breeding herd, we ensure that we fortify our um, products and our nutrition packages for swine all the way across the board. So all those things, the protein, energy, um, vitamins, trace minerals go together. And the other essential nutrient is water. Sometimes people forget about that. If pigs are eating, they have to have access to clean, fresh water. If they're not eating, they're not always gonna drink. And the other side is you wanna check and make sure your feeders are always full because they can fill their bellies up on water because there's no feed available for them. Um, but we always wanna make sure we have clean, fresh, adequate, adequate water throughout their entire um, life stage. Some other um, good uh, information in regards to the nutrition and quality is some people question um, what ingredient, this ingredient's better than the others uh, in the industry. We have access to um, what's called crystalline amino acids. These allow us to have basically precise nutrition. We can provide the exact amounts and the most balanced um, ratios of all 10 or yeah, all 10 essential amino acids so that the pig doesn't waste any extra protein, but also gets the most optimal growth and maximum benefit from the protein that's provided as part of amino acids. And we uh, study this a lot and we make sure that for the environmental side, we can actually reduce ammonia nitrogen excretion from the manure and therefore lower ammonia emissions by being able to be more precise and not provide excesses of protein when it's not needed. And amino acids help us, these crystalline amino acids help us accomplish that goal in a very cost-effective manner. Um, some other ingredients like fiber, you'll hear that um, we want and recommend um, fiber to our sow diets, 
specifically uh, gestating sow diets or, or guilt developer diets, young females coming into the breeding herd and getting ready to uh, become mothers, be bred, have a, have a litter within the, um, after they're a year of age. The fiber component is not only beneficial for a gut health perspective and keeping things moving in the gut, um, we don't want these uh, sows to get overweight and the fiber helps maintain weight control as well as having them, giving them a feeling of satiation. We normally feed, um, say an adult mature sow, somewhere around five pounds of feed a day. If we have a five pounds worth of feed that has a substantial amount of fiber in it, but still uh, provides enough adequate protein and amino acids and all the other vitamins and minerals she needs, she can maintain her body weight and grow and um, develop her uh, fetal litter to an appropriate size and birth weight so that when she decide, when she goes into the farrowing room or the uh, farrowing pen, she can lay down and have piglets without um, being overexerted or get overtired. The other thing is if we have um, females or sows get too heavy or fat, they actually struggle in farrowing. They'll have a prolonged farrowing. There may require more assistance. And the other side is um, they don't milk as well. Uh, animals that are obese, especially female animals, regardless of species, they may have um, too much fat and can't mobilize stuff and they actually end up producing less milk. And they're just, their energy balance is out of whack and they're not as good as if they had uh, been in their fit and trim body condition score of a three, which is what we like to say on a one to five scale, where five is obese and, and one is emaciated and very thin. We don't wanna hit either side of the spectrum, we wanna be somewhere in the middle, so we always try to target around a three for body condition score. Um, now, lactating sows, it's a little bit different for those um, of you who may be breeding animals. We wanna ensure that those lactating sows are getting fed appropriately. They have to support a litter. They have to produce a lot of milk for the amount of weight gain those piglets have from the moment of birth until they're about weaning age at 21 to 28 days and even longer in some operations. Um, so they need a lot of energy and protein and we let those uh, lactating females and try to strive to get them to uh, consume 12 to 15 pounds of feed per day on average. By the time they hit the second or third week of lactation, it's not uncommon for those um, high productive females who are nursing 10 piglets or more to consume 20 plus pounds of feed a day. And that's really, um, those highly prolific maternal line, white line female sows. Even the more um, popular heritage breeds like Durox or Berkshires, they still, uh, they're more known for their meat quality and everything else and maybe not quite as large litters, but I've seen uh, females from the Duroc and Berkshire lines that raise 12 uh, piglets very well and they milk very well. So um, there's some pretty good genetics out there for what people want to raise. Some other ideas on uh, making sure your nutrition is there. We've talked about overall protein, energy requirements, different products. Um, when you go and ask and you're seeking out uh, what products may be best for your pigs, um, you gotta think about their life stage. So if you are just getting started and bringing home those younger feeder pigs that have already been weaned off of the sow and the breeder took care of them and got them, got them started for about the first uh, four weeks post weaning, they've already probably consumed a very high quality, nutrient dense, very digestible, uh, palatable, what we call a nursery starter feed. By the time you get them, if they're already at that point, eight weeks of age, they are still requiring a lot of high plain nutrition. Um, they can eat a corn soybean diet, but I can tell you those ingredients are supplemented and those piglets do very well with the addition of amino acids. There may be some fish meal in there or some egg protein, um, other milk protein products like dried whey. Um, those different things blend in and still are, are utilized very well by those young pigs. And they transition and as they age and become closer to the six, eight weeks post weaning age, then they can basically go on a full vegetarian diet, a corn soybean or a blend of barley, oats, wheat, and soybean meal, what, whatever ingredient grains come together that are formulated to meet all the nutrient specifications for that pig at that point in time. So just talk 
uh, with the folks at Grange Co-op, find out what product lines they have available. Um, I understand they, they do carry and are certified Purina dealers, so they're gonna probably have some of the show feed lines along with a few other products out, out of our Purina um, product portfolio that will serve and work very well for whatever your objective or your purpose of raising pigs is. Um, is so i'm looking at i really appreciate everyone who has tuned in and watched um uh this uh facebook live again if you have questions feel free to please post those as part of the comments i'll be working uh with the staff and trying to get those answered back to you um, but most of the ones i have seen come up are just uh, people showing that they're um, enjoying and uh, have joined uh, the facebook live Again, I appreciate your time. Um, I'm Dr. Emily Otto Tice, a swine nutritionist with Prina Animal Nutrition, and Grange Co-op invited me to talk to you and let you guys know what you can do if you're bringing pigs home for the springtime to get ready for county fairs, or whether you're raising pigs to put pork in your freezer during this time. So if you have any questions, again, submit those to the comments, and I look forward to answering any that you may have. Thank you.